Productivity hacks for Warhammer painting. If car companies build cars the way that most miniature painters paint models, they'd be out of business. The first time you do it is slowest and the worst. The last time you do it is the quickest and the best. It's just a fact, it's not opinion. So in terms of productivity, that is definitely a better thing to do. You're blowing my mind with that. That's such a good idea. This podcast is brought to you by us. If you're a fan of the show and you want to support us, then you should know that we have dropped some really cool merch on the Siege Studios shop. We've got several shirt designs with this really cool graphic on it. I've been wearing mine all of the time for months now, and I genuinely get compliments constantly from people who have absolutely no idea what Warhammer is. The shirts are really nice, high quality cotton, and everything is in stock and dispatched by us. None of that print to order nonsense. So if you want to check out the designs for yourself and see the other merch that we have on the shop, head to the link in this episode's description or go to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. And if you use the code POD10 at checkout, you'll save 10% and you'll get a free sticker pack with your order. Hello everyone and welcome to Paint Perspective episode 69. In this one, we're going to be talking about productivity hacks that you can use to get more done with your hobby painting, all that and more. But first, Joe, play 10th edition. I did, had my first game. Um, it's it's really good. I'm like, I've like... It it's like a make or break in it. The first game, it's you nice. either like can see yourself fully getting into it, or you immediately never want to do that again. You either get tabled and never want to play ever again, or you table your opponent and want to play more than ever. Well, so, we being honest, we didn't actually even finish our game. Oh, like it good. was more of a, it was a complete like sussing it out. Like let's just and. To be fair, throughout the whole thing, like I don't know how many rules we got wrong, but there was many, there would have been a lot. How many times did you ask people near you for advice? Or for I actually that? didn't. <laughs> I actually didn't. So, what was your? How long had it been since you played forty k before this? What edition was that? Uh, I played a similar situation. I played one game of nine. <laughs> um, was that the break? That was the opposite. <laughs> right. Okay. That was the opposite. Are you going to try and now? beat? The record of one game per edition. I've already got my second game booked in, mate. Oh! <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I played one game of ninth and I was like, this is just, so I can't deal with this. Do you know what I mean? It was so, like, the, it was so many things to remember and, like, um, stratagems were way more of a thing. The, the change from eighth to ninth. Eighth is what I played, like, semi-regularly. Mm -hmm. And I, I was already getting bored of that at the time. So that probably played into it. I do think, aside from just the game, like the differences between the game in ninth and 10th, I just think the situation and experience of how I played my first game is a bit different as well. So like when I played with ninth, I was playing with, obviously the same group of uh, friends that I was playing with, with 10th. And it just felt a bit more like... Um, we were all like bored of ape already, but we were just carrying on because this is what we do now and we've got this army. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we, it was, so none of us felt particularly excited to play ninth that first game that we played ninth. Um, it was like me and it was all like the chill team group, basically. So it was like me and Barrett. And yeah. yeah. And uh, I feel like we all felt the same because I don't think any of us played ninth after that. Was that like, at Warhammer World? When you went to Warhammer no, World? No, no, we done it literally just right like, uh, around uh, Toby's okay. house, like just uh, as a first tester. I think it was like, oh, I'm trying to, the, not to bring up like COVID, but like the whole lockdown thing just froze it completely off, like yeah. memory wise. I can't even remember when that was. Ninth hadn't been out long though. Um, I remember we were playing outside, so I don't know if that was still down to a <laughs> lockdown rule or not. But um, but yeah, this complete opposite. Like I, I went in excited and I think in turn had a better experience. Um, like I say, we did not play a proper game. There was no way. Like um, I, there were so many rules I was getting wrong. There were things from first edition kill team that I was thinking was a rule was just a mainstay rule for 40k like i was getting so many wires crossed and then i got home got home and it was like in the group chat straight away it was like both of us being like oh yeah that's different by the way oh i've just read this <laughs> oh oh it does literally say like the, 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 do you know what i mean like there was so much stuff wrong but it was fun was mm. the main part of it like just a whole as a whole experience how, um, how do you 
prepare to play a game? I guess it helps because you've played previous editions of 40k. Mm. But is it like a okay, read the book covers cover, or is it like someone knows the rules? Do you know what? Played, I because we were we both spoke about it. Uh, me and my friend that I was playing with, we both spoke about it beforehand, and we were both in similar positions where we have played before, not loads, and we're coming into tenth completely fresh. So we kind of understood that each of us were going to be not fully knowing the rules. We literally didn't even play like a proper mission. I don't think we did. We kind of did the, is it called like only war or something the, or, or whatever it's called? The, the main, no, like, no idea. I have no idea. The main rule book mission basically. Um, and we kind of did like a version of that. Um, how many points did you play? A thousand points. Okay. But like, I only had 950 points. I'm fairly sure you can spend points on like upgrades and stuff, but I didn't even get that far yeah. looking. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm, I'm like a bit that. down with the lingo. I, I think it's it, it enhancements. Oh, someone's read the book. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, yeah, I, enhancements, I think. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say attachments, but that's not right. No, that's is something it? else. I know some like some of the buzzwords, but I don't know what any of them mean. Yeah. So like when someone says the word like strategy and whatever, I'm like, I've heard that one. Yeah. I don't know what it means. But it's like have you ever seen those TikToks where it's like what English sounds like to non-English yeah, yeah. speakers or what an American sounds like to British people and stuff like that. Like, um, it's kind of like that. Like you're just hearing words that you know, but you don't really know what they're For me, about. it's those current trend TikToks of corporations when the like Gen Z yeah, guy yeah. writes the script <laughs> yeah. and it's just a bunch of old people being like, slay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so... We, we knew that that was going to be the thing. And I think because of that, approaching the first game in that way is almost more of the reason I enjoyed it than the game itself, yeah. it feels like. Fair, um, yeah. And I came away. There were some bits where, being honest, I was, I was rolling hot <laughs> at some parts to the point of where I was like, that can't be, that can't be right. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've just killed this entire thing so, with so. my first whatever shot and uh, but that was just how it, how those, it goes those, those, those weighted dark angel with dice george i yeah. actually i actually took some sm battle reports dice oh, so fair. blame pardo i mean they roll hot they do roll pretty hot those dice <laughs> blame yeah. pardo if yeah. i remember when i had those in my uh my um my iron warriors i was it was i might they, they my iron warriors might as well have had hoovers they were just <laughs> they're literally just literally just blowing all grass um, blowers what uh what faction was your opponents playing? Necrons. Okay. Necrons. So it was, uh, I didn't even actually play as Dark Angels. I played as like standard Space Marines. I didn't have any Dark Angel specific units. Um, I thought that would be the easiest way to learn. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then that, he, had, he had Necrons. So, um, which again, Necrons also has a lot of uh, rules to get your head around and like the regeneration thing and stuff like that. Um, my big takeaways from it initially were like, instantly just felt smoother to learn mm -hmm. at very least like i think a lot of people complained about the last one being more complicated and then they've made this one more simple and now it feels like people complain that it's this is like not, not I, maybe I, not too simple but more geared towards um tournaments. tournament play but like everything they've done to get to that fr from my experience of my first game and reading the book for the first time has made it easier to pick yeah, up. Yeah. So do with that information what you will. Like that, I imagine that was their aim. As someone on the outside who doesn't know anything about this, and I could be completely wrong, the way I've observed it is it started out a lot simpler. And have they made changes to make it like more cumbersome? Like I, with the, I, I with don't the know, codex and stuff coming out, is it getting a bit more convoluted? I don't know, but the, the I don't know about that, being honest, because I haven't been paying attention to it for, for long enough. But the the issue with the codex is rolling out and stuff like that is just the nature of the game. Thing is you They're never going to release every codex yeah, at once. It's, it's not, not going to happen. To, it's not realistic. Oh, no, I'm not saying that. To, I just no, no, I no, got no. the impression that it's perhaps not as simple to pick up now as it was when it was like brand new. I could be completely, completely wrong about I, that. I don't, I don't know. I have honest. no idea about um, Tenth Edition. Honestly, I've um, not, not played. I, I, I have not played a single game of Tenth Edition and I don't intend to. Well, you know, if we get... One million likes on this episode. <laughs> if we hit 50k subs, because <laughs> yeah, uh, was it 40.9 percent of you watch these episodes but aren't subscribed? And we're getting close. Yeah. And James, you heard him say it literally just now. James did say 
when we hit 50k subscribers, he will play 10th edition live on the podcast. He'll do a battle. He did literally just say that. I cannot. I will do that. Great idea. Are we able to do some AI? Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We'll deep fake that bit, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Reminder Um, for George in post production. (laughs) Just do some. Yeah, got it. Um, Yeah, so really enjoyed it. Um, Yeah, was was instantly like rereading the rules and, and. I, I forgot every ability that I was supposed to have. Nice. Forgot every army ability. Forgot most character abilities. Like, but didn't really feel the pressure to remember them from from game one. To be honest, so I, I, I just had a fun time and Good. met a couple of listeners as well. Oh yeah, um, they saw me rocking up to Bad Moon with my cardboard box full of unpainted models. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> how's that uh, painting change going? Joe? At least they know I'm not lying. Like I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm so, you know, I'm saying the the truth here. I'm Were just they being sprayed honest. or just completely grey? Completely grey. They weren't yeah, that's even clean. Shameful, isn't <laughs> they weren't <laughs> even clean. They, they weren't even clean. No, they're just. They're you just were, you of, clean them post assembly? Uh, well, not normally, but when I'm planning to play a game, with them, I need them <laughs> and I need them built. Yeah. Um, the yeah. So that was that was quite funny. But yeah, uh, one of them in particular, I didn't catch any of their names, but one of them in particular shouted out my hobby hacks, said that. You two should stop bullying me about them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the listeners are on my side with hobby hacks, pretty much. I think so that's a unanimous be... decision. One person coming up to me yeah. and saying it represents the entire community. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. yeah. Another another six months till the next Joe hobby hack. But actually, yeah. if yeah. anything, we bully James for the hobby hacks more True. than anyone. Uh, I think we all bully each other. Yeah. All right. I think it's a mutual no, bullying I'm, relationship. I'm, I'm fairly, fairly, fairly decent to both of you. Thank you very much. I was only the drill off where I absolutely schooled you back in time. <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, so that, that counts as bullying. <laughs> <you> <laughs> yeah. And I won, I won a challenge. Yeah. That yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to my second game, yeah, to be honest. Okay, yeah. And it's bad news for you because I'm now fully motivated to get this army painted. Well, actually, I say it's bad news for you because there's no way that James is getting his army painted. Well, anyway, excuse me. Hang on, save, save this. Hang on a second. Hang on. hang on a sec. I think I threw down a bit of a gauntlet the other day to both of you. Didn't get a reply. But, do, you know, do you know why? Right. We're but, going to talk about this in the post show afterwards uh, for the patrons. James thinks that he's on a comeback. He started a different army. He's like, oh, look at me, guys. I'm I'm catching up. I'm doing 20 intercessors for the wrong faction. <laughs> the challenge is Maldi, you're Maldi. Yeah, I'll have too. both done. <laughs> There is one more thing I wanted to address. I know this is getting on a bit for the preamble, but I've been there was an for accusation. I've been waiting for this, yeah. There was an accusation thrown at me on it wasn't the last acu- It wasn't an accusation. It was a recollection He's of historical events. Backtracking already. <laughs> yeah, I know was, that from There the, was an accusation <laughs> in the last episode uh, where George said, I was planning on taking both of your joint hawk lords. Hawk lords. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, is a combat patrol, so would not allow me to play a thousand points. Silly me. Um, and what happened with that was there's a reason James didn't know what you were talking about was because I never, never even asked about that, never said about that. I said to George as a joke, he, I think you were like, "Oh, how's the army coming along?" or something like that. And I was like, "Oh yeah, I've got my first game in two weeks, but it's like not even fully built yet." Um, might have to ask if I could. Might have to just take. I didn't even say might have to ask. I think I was like, might just have to take your hawk lords and see how, see how that goes or something like that. And that was it. It was a passing joke. You know what I mean? I don't even remember that. But I'm learning now. No, well, you weren't in the room. It wasn't you weren't here. <laughs> That's why. That's yeah, why you don't remember go. it. That's why. And if I wanted to take them, I would obviously probably have to ask James. I don't think I could just come and go to George. <laughs> Can I have them? By the way, they'd take them. So George took that as my entire plan was apparently um, to take your oh, hawk lords to, to, play, to throw dice at them. At, at, I, at, took, I took that at face value of you seeing that as a not an unreasonable contingency plan. See, that, that, that speaks volumes <laughs> of, of George's uh, lack of enthusiasm or, or trust that I am going to be able to, to... Belief, I should say. Lack of belief well, that I'm going to be able to to fully even build my army. <laughs> um, yeah, so as as happens often on this podcast... Um, what, the bullying? <laughs> you know, you, you wait until I'm not here. You wait until I'm not here and then you throw some uh, bizarre I, I, accusation on, on, in the on, mix. Don't aim that at me. I, I'd like to point out... Well, that I, I can't... I, no, no, I, don't, no. I wasn't even there for the no. conversation. Do you know what? Like, I'm very glad that you actually said... No, I didn't hear that. Or no, I don't remember that. Yeah, rather than just back. going along with it, because sometimes, back. sometimes it can be tempting. If someone says that you'd spoke about something and we're recording, it can be tempting to be like, "Oh yeah," but you don't remember it. Yeah. So I'm very I glad your, that I you actually back, said. I had your back. Um, well, 
We'll let we'll let the listeners decide which is the more plausible story. Well, a, a few of them saw me rock up with my cardboard box of models. So I think, <laughs> I think uh, yeah, I think they they know. Um, and uh, yeah, I think just I'm going to be hot on these accusations that get thrown at me when when I'm not on. I tell you what, I'm going to be hot on smashing both the armies out and proving you both wrong. That's what that's what I'm going to be <laughs> hot on. You, uh, you we'll get, get to that we'll after. Get to we'll that get to that after. after. Uh, listeners' comments. Uh, Pillars of Adventure says, uh, love that James remembered Takeoff magazine. I collected that for the model, but the magazine itself was actually awesome. Mag Did you send off for the t-shirt? I can confirm I do still have the t-shirt somewhere. <laughs> you still have <laughs> it you somewhere? Have it? Yes. You've got to find it. I will it, find it, it yes. Hang on. Is it like a child sized t-shirt? It probably is, but I won't get into it. Youth oh, large. Yeah. It'd be a youth large. Yeah. Or yeah. Youth large. Youth, youth medium. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I did. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Uh, Takeoff was an amazing magazine. Um, yeah, I am, uh, I am absolutely bonkers about airplanes. I always have been. Um, that one we actually watched, didn't we? We we found on YouTube like the trailer for it and stuff Takeoff like that. Trailer. And that one did seem more like you were buying the magazine, yeah, because yeah. the magazine was interesting. Oh, the magazine. You was great. also happened to build a model by the end of it, but it was less no substance. It yeah. was less like oh buy it to get the model yeah I had everything I had the ring yeah. binder I had the t-shirt <laughs> yeah. I had the model I had the magazine please yeah, show up next week in just an ill-fitting take off yeah. t-shirt I'd, like I'd, I'd have to get like a denim jacket and cut the t-shirt off and then just sew it onto the back or something yeah. we, uh, oh someone found your magazine yeah as well. yeah, we, yeah someone commented robot with mine one. which was real robots was that or, it yeah, yeah yeah that was it and we we looked up um, I completely forgot that uh, there was a DVD that came with it because mine was a bit more a little bit more modern. A bit more two thousands with yeah. a DVD. Yeah. Right. yeah. C D ROM. Um so, <laughs> so it, it has a DVD with it with I think with issue one. And someone's uploaded the DVD onto YouTube so you can go and watch it if you just type in like Real Robots episode one or something like that, or issue one. And um the voiceover on the DVD is Craig Charles, who obviously did uh, Robot, Robot Wars. Wars. Yeah. 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 Um after Craig I guess Wolf. Jeremy. Clarkson might have done. Oh, was this so? Was this Robot like Wars? around Robot Wars being popular? It was probably around the time of Robot Wars being popular. Or it might have just finished, or I don't know how long Robot Wars. But it was might. like trying to integrate well. somewhat with. I, I guess they were going. For, it was not affiliated with it at all. But, but they were trying but to. I guess they were getting existence. that popularity yeah. over. That's probably the reason I got it at first because I liked Robot Wars as a kid. Cool. Um, I, I tell you what, I miss TV shows of that era so much. Yeah, like, honestly, <laughs> I thought you were going to stop at TV shows. I miss them. Why don't they do them anymore? Why don't they TV make them shows? TV shows? Um, I, yeah, you don't really get anything like that anymore. Red Dwarf. Like, yeah. Scrappy Challenge. Oh, what a program, Scrappy <laughs> Challenge. So polar opposite TV they're shows. Both, they're both <laughs> building machines. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, true. Um, uh, oh, did you mean to say uh, Robot Wars rather than Red Dwarf just then? Yeah, but Is Craig that, Charles yeah. was in Red he Dwarf. Was in was both, yeah. Yeah. He was in yeah. both, so, yeah. So yeah, that was funny. Um, and I don't have any of that anymore. And I did not finish building the robot. As a child, I think. Do you have like a heart? Did you have like a half-built robot? Yeah, a, I must. Just have. a sad little I like basically Roomba had, device. I think like from memory, <laughs> and you've done a bleep, not a bleep bop. Yeah, from memory, I think I got only to one the, track turns. So it just goes in a circle. No, no, no I got to the <laughs> point where it had, it had wheels. So um, get it right, George. I, I think I got to the point where like it would move with the remote control, but like it wasn't fully. There was other bits to put on it. Do you right. know what I mean? Like it wasn't fully built, but. That's quite. Uh, um, how old are you then? That's quite advanced, I feel. For uh, I mean, a fair bit chat. of it was probably like, "Dad, can you do this?" <laughs> um, yeah, it was kind of. I, I don't know if you'd get that anymore. Like no. a, a thing that, uh, like a magazine targeted at children that encourages it's educational. You to, that yeah. encourages you. Well, yeah, it's also like solder this or yeah. something. <laughs> Just trust that you're going to ask your parents for it. But yeah, it was fun. Um, so yeah, that was our two. Two subscription magazines. Oh, I, I, magazine. I didn't get a t-shirt or anything on mine though. Yeah. Fair. Uh, ben Jappel, I think that says. Uh, I prefer the term pile of savings rather than, uh, I presume that's pile of potential. Uh, GW prices keep going up. So something you bought two or three years ago has now saved you 5 to $15 versus buying it today. True. So that's in relation to me saying uh, not to buy it straight not away. Not to buy stuff straight away. If you're like looking at collecting stuff, you, had, you had a few replies about this. Yeah, um, there were I, a few. You know what? I'm coming in hot. Uh, I say that's a bad take. Uh, you're not saving five to fifteen dollars. You're spending forty to sixty dollars. You're not saving anything. You're still spending the money. No, but you're versus not, spending it 
buy versus buying the thing on later the hopes on. that someday you might possibly, maybe, possibly want to paint it. Maybe yeah, but it gains value. It it no, 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 it, no, 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 no. Well, as, what I said was, if there are, I think I think they're both valid points, but they're both coming from different perspectives. Perspectives in terms of what you want to gain at the end of it. So you're you are right. You are spending forty pound that you wouldn't normally spend right now. But their point is potentially if they've written an army list and they're going to need that thing, they might as well buy it now because in a year, that when they get to painting it, it might cost more. That's fair in the context of an army. But what I'm saying is people do that thought process perpetually and there's new stuff that comes out that they end up buying and that pile just still grows because you're not actually getting... People who have this problem with the pile of shame stuff, they're buying stuff as quickly or faster I, than they're getting through backlog. I think the you just have to be okay with it. Yeah. At whatever point you, you're comfortable with. Like if you enjoy it, if you are the sort of person that wants to buy everything as soon as it comes out, that's fine. Just don't then moan that you've got a pile of shame. That's Do you what, know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it, it's, it, you that's just the angle be... I'm coming out from. I've said this many, many times. If you're into just collecting the models and you just want to have the stuff, I do too. It's perfectly fair. I just take issue with people that like have this massive pile of potential, pile of shame, whatever, and then either complain about it or try to justify it. Mm. Without actually taking any action to either paint it or stop buying the stuff, the only yeah, person yeah. culpable of the pile of shame is the person buying the models. It's just it. And the first step is acknowledging, Except, yeah. acceptance. Yeah. acceptance. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just think, yeah, it's so. It's a similar point I'm going to get into when we come into the productivity thing, but I just think it's so different for every single person that it's like, you can't, like it's 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 almost like what someone else's view on it is almost shouldn't matter to you, you I guess. Everyone's yeah. everyone's coming at it from a different context and everyone's got a different aim with it. So mm -hmm. it's just whatever you're comfortable with, isn't it? Really? Yeah. I've, um, I've, if When people are like, yeah, I'll just buy loads of stuff. Other than George. You know? George, is all, George is wrong, obviously. But then like everyone else. Like, <laughs> I actually, uh, I caught myself out a little bit because uh, at the weekend, I was going through uh, clearing out my garage you were like, oh, I have four boxes here, actually. <laughs> I was going through my garage and I forgot that when I moved from my uh, old studio uh, to moving it all back home, I forgot how much stuff I had just like put in a, cr like those big storage bits. Yeah, and just put it away. And just like put in the garage. Because I was like, oh, I haven't got room in the house. So I'll deal with it later. Mm. And uh, a couple of years have gone by since then. So I yeah. completely forgot about it. So uh, I was going through the garage and I was like, oh, I've actually got like, not, not a pile of shame, but I'll, I'll call it... Uh, go on, George, you can admit it. You, a you can admit it. Go on. Go on, you can admit it. Go on. <laughs> it's stuff that I don't even want. I just need to get rid of. I'll tell you what, if you're going to get rid of it, though, good job you bought it then because you'll probably make a bit of money on it. Yeah, now. that's true. So yeah, that's yeah. good. Think War, of the same. So that's, actually, the same. that's you're, actually good, you're, isn't it? You're due a trip to war boot soon, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I should, yeah. I should war boot it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. you doing... Yeah, you... Yeah, it'd be good to... They're all sealed. I've just got like loads of Oh, they're sealed. <laughs> Look at it. Uh, <laughs> you don't, the, the thing is, we don't need to war boot it because we work with James. Yeah. So we could just say... James, you want to buy this? Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of selling this. And then straight away, yeah. there he is. Uh, Happy Dude says, building and priming is defo a headache that gets in the way of hitting the pile of potential. Uh, bulk priming whilst the weather is good is something I'm experimenting with. Amen. Do it while the sun shines, and then when it's snowing, you got loads of paint. Best way. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Like, I, I've spoke about trying and failing with this with my Necron army, my Doomed Necron army from a couple of years ago because it ended up putting me off. Yeah. I had this mountain of models that I had to paint, but I think my problem was I was intending to literally paint them all together as well. Yeah, I, w I didn't just build them all, prime them all, and then okay, here's this unit. I'm going to paint whatever. I was treating it almost how we would treat a commission where it's like, I want to hammer this all out mm. as quick as possible. And that's where I've, I've kind of failed, I think. So um, the build, building and priming step, if you can do as much of that as possible with what you've got, then that's good. Although if you're talking about it from a point of view of stuff that you don't know that you're 100% going to paint, then it's potentially not worth it because as we've said before, you know, conversation just then about the, the stack, um, you if you're not planning on painting it imminently, you might be better off just leaving it sealed in the box. Yeah, yeah. So I'm surprised at James's answer actually, because you you you'll agree with this. James is the sort of person to go out when it's raining with an umbrella, yeah, and then just 
just go for it. I don't, need, need, needs must, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know like, I'm not saying I don't. I'm just saying it's it, if you it, can, if you, you can. One, yeah. I, I literally, can you not fully picture him in like a car park of IKEA with an umbrella? Hundred percent. I'll, I'll do it. Like, I'll, just I'll anywhere. I'll do it anywhere. I'll, 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 I'll undercoat and prime anywhere, anytime, any. The place. umbrella, by the way, is for the models. James is getting wet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> James is in shorts and a t-shirt in this yeah. scenario yeah. 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 yeah yeah, and it's like minus 50 <laughs> <laughs> the clothes are wrapping the spray can to keep it warm <laughs> like, so. it's got a jumper yeah. you know, like a beer koozie oh my god that's an yeah. amazing product like, what is yeah. that I thought of that that could be, that could be quite a good little spray can yeah. spray yeah. can Cut jumper <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a favourite character from a book or piece of artwork and thought to yourself if only that had a miniature Custom Service is our character creation brand here at Siege Studios. Custom Service is not just a kit bash. We create miniatures using traditional hand sculpting alongside conversion for entirely unique and bespoke miniatures that will blow you away. Our talented team of sculptors methodically and meticulously bring your thoughts into reality with the precise, refined and sharp work you'd expect from a digital sculpt and pair that with our world-class painting team for an incredible display piece you'll be proud to own. To bring your character to life and get a quote now, head to siegestudios.co.uk or head to the link in this episode's description. Productivity hacks for Warhammer painting. How can you get stuff done more efficiently and effectively? So everyone's got busy life, work, a lot of people got families, other hobbies, other things to do. And there's a lot of conversation about like time in this hobby. Uh, and I thought it'd be cool for us to speak to our experiences as commission painters over the years uh, and also I guess just like seasoned hobbyists, uh, some of our hacks for productivity, how to like stay productive. So the way this conversation is going to work is we're not going to be focusing this like super specifically on like, oh, we think you should batch paint or sub assembly. It's, like, it's been done to death. Uh, I think we're going to be talking about more like overall mindset things you can do. Maybe some things that uh, aren't spoken about as much that are equally important. I think, yeah. So to speak. And I think like things that can be applied to any painting project that you're doing. So you know, we could do an episode on army painting as we've done a few that are probably going to be very helpful to anyone who's painting armies, but this is going to be kind of stuff that if you're painting a character for competition or you're painting an army or you're painting a squad, it could hopefully help exactly. with any of that. Yep. Yeah. And uh, shout out to Matt Miller who suggested this on the Siege Studios Discord. Uh, if you want to join the Siege Studios Discord, it's linked in the description. Uh, you can submit topic ideas over there. Uh, James, what is, uh, you got any first points, ways you like to keep productive? The thing I always talk about on every class that I teach and, and every time we do like uh, online tuition and stuff like that, like um, the time is this thing that passes by without you realizing that you're spending it. I think because it's not tangible, it's not a physical thing. It's something that's just, it, it trundles by whether you choose to use it wisely or not. And I think, I think the thing is, is like in the moment of you doing an action, that is the most efficient time for you to be doing that. Does that like on mass, if that makes sense. So what I mean by that is if you're, you're building and cleaning something you're in the mindset of building and cleaning it makes sense to build and clean more things whilst in that mindset than pause switch your attention to something else and then pick up the building and cleaning hat again if that makes are sense. you saying in the sense of like rather than building and cleaning a squad and then swapping to painting like building clean yeah. multiple things even if it's stuff you want to do but then you could sense. even break that down to like even if you're only painting a squad, that's all you have, rather than fully building and cleaning one model, fully building and clean the whole squad, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah it's, it, it is exactly scalable in that way or like uh, it's spreadable across the project in a way. So, and, and the reason for that is just because uh, just biologically as humans, doing a, not doing a task over and over and over again, mu muscle memory is developed and you do that action better and quicker every time that you do it. So it, it makes more sense, in my opinion, to really... I, I, I love having building, like a building day. Like, so, it, and I'll, I'll talk about like your, your hobby time and painting sessions as we go through this topic anyway. But like, really like it, when you decide to do something, commit to that thing because everything that you do within that session will inherently get better the more you do it. And then you'll end that session by going, oh, I've built and cleaned all of this stuff. Like, and then the next time you go to the desk to do something, you've got way more that's at the same level for you to then do the next part of the process on. Does that make sense? So I, I, I think that within, within that as well, actually, I think you get um, quicker as you go as well. So for example, with like, uh, you know, when you're doing like a box of say, like it's always an example, I hate using it, but like when you're doing like a box of Marines, yeah. uh, it says a box of 10 like yeah. intercessors, 
it's normally two five man sprues. Mm-hmm. So you get two of each sprue, right? Mm-hmm. So then when you do the second sprue, same. even just like knowing where the parts, I think Ben spoke about this on um, did, one of our yeah. previous episodes, like just knowing where those parts are on the sprue, just because you've done it 20 minutes ago. If you've done it like last, if you've done like one half of them now, yeah. and then another half in two weeks, you're going to forget where those parts are and stuff. But yeah. because you've just done it like two hours ago, you pick up the sprue, you remember when I'm building model 7A. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I remember this is one where the parts were over here. Like, well, I'll literally, I'll get into my part of this a, a little bit uh, in a bit. But the uh, 10 man scout squad that I was just building recently, it, I did it, uh, well, 10 scout models, I did it in two five man squads, um, which is one of the kill team boxes um, before the. The rigmarole. <laughs> um, and uh, the, I, I just mirrored them. I'm mm-hmm. not someone who particularly cares about everyone has to be posed differently mm-hmm. for, for gaming. Um, I don't really care about that. I don't really mind that the gaming pieces are just sort of tokens yeah, as long yeah. as they look cool. Yeah, yeah. If that squad's over there and that squad's over here and th- those yeah. models look the same, mostly, maybe I'll change a few things. Heads look in a different way different accessories whatever but i'm not particularly bothered about the poses looking the same mm-hmm. as each other so the the two squads of scouts are like completely mirrored so i was actually building each one each identical one same. together yeah so i was a step further than that i was cutting the same piece off both sprues like same time one after the yeah. other yeah so i instantly knew where it was i found it once and i cut that i cut that yeah done and then you even know like where the mold lines are on exactly, the same parts yeah. wise where the little sprue joints are when you're cleaning them. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. much more efficient. So I yeah, I definitely like that process of it. Um I think that it that mindset overall, you can boil that down to like any granular level of it if if you want. Like okay, now for example, some people I don't necessarily do this, um, but I know some people do, which is cutting all the pieces out first. Yeah. And and separating them all into their little groups of of models. I I think overall that probably is for productivity better. It's because nice you're going through and cutting right. everything. Right, yeah, going through and cutting everything. You're in that mindset of cutting. cutting yeah. And so you've I'm also cutting. got the clippers in your hand and you're literally just going the, part exactly, to part. Exactly. Yeah. So the problem with it with older kits, it worked better because yeah. because there was a more a, mix a, and more, match. More, more mix and match Whereas with now, newer kits. Yeah. Specific part numbers need to go in to specific part numbers so now i struggle a little bit personally if it's a new kit that i'm not used to if i was to do that and still try and follow the instructions i might sometimes get a bit confused between oh is that part supposed to that go there that, or is, yeah. oh that's been confused into that one or, or, or the way whatever. i the way i like to do that is a little hack for you already uh when i go through the instruction book i will p- look at normally like each model is done like in a full stage on its own yeah yeah yeah, yeah. even if it's like a 10-man squad they're like here's how to build this guy from start to finish i'll just focus my attention on that one model i'll look at every single part on there clip out every single one and then i'll put them in just a little uh plastic shot glass yeah yeah like the disposable ones i've got just a big stack of them Uh, and i'll have those all like laid out my desk and i'll just put all of the parts clip them all out put them into that glass that's model one that's model one all the parts are together then i'll go on to the next one yeah and then i've definitely if i haven't got time to like finish building and clean every single one at least they're all sat there in that little cup i I think that's fine but i even in that situation i personally have found myself when i've done that exactly that um i have still like struggled sometimes or like maybe one part got thrown into the wrong pot or whatever and and so i think productivity wise that is the best thing to do like if you boil what james said down right down to every single action cut everything out clean everything build everything do you know what i mean like do that action for everything that's in your session Uh, the reason i mean i use an analogy to to explain it as best as possible which is if if car companies build cars the way that most miniature painters build or clean or paint models they'd be out of business and that's because it people butterfly all over the place uh focusing on the granularity of this action and doing it across everything it the first time you do it is slowest and the worst the last time you do it is the quickest and the best it's just the fact it's not opinion like as you work through stuff muscle memory hand-eye coordination all those things improve and like uh, you're saying about doing it for squads but like when i do character models the what we just said about dialing it right down to just the indiv- i will cut everything off that sprue that i need for the character model because 
you get a few extra spare heads, spare bits. Then they stay on this brew. This brew gets the hell out of my life, and I've just got the bits that I need for that character. So, I, so when it comes to like single piece models, it's that's, still it, that's exactly yeah. what I do. I literally just cut out all the bits I, for the model. And I do have to say as well. So because of the like troubles that I've had with that with squads before and getting mixed up and like oh I don't know if that part goes there or whatever. Because of that, um, in fairness, I only tried it on like kill team boxes, which are a little bit more uh, complicated, I guess. They are, yeah, yeah. Um, because you're not necessarily building every model that's listed in the instructions. So I was like marking down, I was like writing a number on the model in the instruction book and then writing the corresponding number on the... Uh, on right. the shot glass is that because stuff. rules wise the models have to be built in like a certain way with specific loadouts it's yeah and, be, and just because there's so many different uh, I actually completely different topic but I want to go back to this at some point is that I think a lot of the people that moan about the new kits not being flexible and stuff like that should build and paint some of these kill, kill team. team boxes because they they remind me of old kits you like build the bodies and then there's all these options yeah so what they'll do is like in the scouts one, unless I got something like ridiculously wrong, there's even a full other body that you might not use. There's like eleven bodies. Oh, really? Um, That's unusual. For, yeah, for which, which like I think maybe you don't get enough of like one other thing to make. Maybe you don't get enough other arms or or right. one arm to make anything else work. But I ended up with like a body or at least like a torso or something that I was like, oh, I don't even. I'm not even using that. Do you know what I mean? So, so. Because I'd tried that before and tried your George's way that you just described before in terms of clipping it all out, uh, separating it all, and, and I had some issues. Um, when I was doing the scouts this time, I didn't do that. I basically went through, like I was saying, I was mirroring them. So it was five different types of models, total and two of each one. And I would go through and clip and then clean anything that was a connection point not clean anything else i was also building them in a rush obviously to game with them um but then i would i was like fully building each model at a time and it took so much longer doing this doing it this way like if i if i had have clipped it all out then cleaned it then built it i would have got them all built so much quicker so in terms of productivity that is definitely a better thing to do yeah. um and i'm, I'm gonna try that again when it comes to building something else especially something a bit more simple than these kill team boxes um because they're they're a little bit more complicated i think there's more to do on each model yeah i mean I, the, the, the question i was that prompted this whole topic and the thing i mean I, there's something i want to just throw into the mix about that like something that i think that we all get super excited about uh, about getting into paint getting into getting our time to hobby and getting our time to do whatever it is that we're going to do for our collection or our army whatever it is whether it's so competition entry army small project whatever it is you're doing um i don't think many people the moment they sit down actually think to themselves what do i want to get done in this session because the the hunt for the dopamine hit of doing hobby blinds blinds them from actually making informed decisions about thinking right i've got an hour what am i actually going to do in this session and i think that's something that i do want to talk about because like i think it takes literally a second or two if you just sit down and go right how long have i got what do i want to get done in this session like and if you, and i massively advocate that you actually do that when you sit down because it will make it will actually mean that you get to the end of the time period that you're doing the hobby for and feel like it's more rewarding because you've actually had a sense of achievement of doing the thing that you planned to do when you sat down in the first place how narrow do you go with that do you mean in the sense of like rather than just sitting down and going i'm gonna build this squad do you set like a an an end objective for that or do you mean just having a bit more of a conscious thought the time dictates what i'm going to use that session for and what i mean by that is if i have let's just say i know i'm going out in 45 minutes and i've got 45 minutes to kill does it make sense me spending time setting up the pallet doing all of that etc or right getting a model that is it does it make more sense to go right have i bought five new paints last week and I haven't even stuck them on a palette to see what they behave like or what their coverage is like or what they they finish like or what they behave like, you know, to put them in my journal or, or whatever the case may be. Like I, I, sitting in that, deciding I've got X amount of time, 
what do I want to get done out of it? And I don't get me wrong. There are circumstances where you maybe you have a stressful day or you just don't want to think about other things and like, or whatever, and you just don't care. And you just want to sit at your desk and, and tinker for a little bit or whatever. That's fine. However, if you're trying to paint an army, you'll get a project done or, you know, paint an army for a tournament or paint, paint for a game with your mates or like whatever it is, actually spending two minutes of that time session going, I've got an hour to paint or two hours to paint and I want to get this done. Or, do you know what? I'm not very good at uh, uh, blending or I'm not very good at, uh, at my brush control is not that good. Or I need to get better at doing freehand or I need to get better at painting straight lines or, you know, does it make more sense me sitting for that half hour session that I've got and actually just practicing with a, on a bit of plastic card, painting some straight lines to try and actually get better brush control and pressure management? That 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 half hour session of practicing that will serve every other painting session afterwards way better than you just going, oh, I'm going to rush this model in this half hour session because I've got to get something done. Yeah. You know, like, and I think that's something that I really want, like, I, from all the classes that I've taught over the years, that's something that's always consistently been there is that a lot of painters don't actually assess for a couple of seconds or minutes, what they actually want to get done in that session. And that's why you you scrabble through that time you've got and feel like you're not getting stuff done at the end of it. Because you're not actually planning, you're not actually thinking like, what am I going to use this time for? Yeah. And I think that'll that will benefit you massively if you start if you start actually thinking, how long have I got and what do I want to get done? Is it realistic for me to try and get this thing that I want to get done within the 45 minutes, hour, two hours that I've got? I think that it, comes into sorry, do you want to? Yeah, I, was just, I, was just, I think it's really rewarding as well, actually, because I think if you're someone who struggles with motivation, you might be able to weigh in on this as well, Joe, with the army that you're doing. If, you're, if you've got this big army that you're trying to do or this big overarching project and you just feel like, okay, I've got an hour, I guess I'll chip away at it. Yeah. And then you finish that going, oh, I've still got so much left rather than, okay, I've, I've got an hour, let's get X done. Mm -hmm. And then you finish that session, you've got that done. You feel more accomplished. You Correct, go, oh, yeah. I've got that done then you can start moving on to Small, the next thing. Smaller goals, right? Yeah. We've, we've done that before. Like in any context, whether you're painting a character or an army, smaller goals for your session, mm -hmm. which is what James is saying. Especially um, if you've got limited time. It's just going to make, it's going to keep you more hour up. Like it's going to be more exciting. Um, I think for me, like one of the things in line with what James is saying exactly is something that I've kind of stumbled upon is I've spoke before about um, taking a lot of things that I've learned from, uh, fitness and going into that world and going to the gym and, and stuff like that um and translating that to miniature painting as as odd as that sounds um and uh a lot of that is around productivity and motivation because people struggle with the motivation to actually get into the gym for example yeah. they struggle with the motivation to stay on top of their food and i've definitely been like um i've definitely struggled with both of those things throughout the period that i've been going to the gym so um learning ways to combat that has helped me come up with some ways to help combat the same thing in miniature painting and part of that is just general life like productivity stuff like you don't need to necessarily look into like how can i be as productive as possible in this painting session what james is getting at there is just like general life planning yeah and one of the things i started with jim um, I was finding like, cause I didn't have say a gym session written on my calendar. It wasn't like locked in that I was going to be going. And I knew in my head, yeah, I'm doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But if I didn't really feel like it on Monday, then I'll be like, okay, well I can do it on Tuesday. And then maybe I would do it on Tuesday, but then I wouldn't feel like doing the same thing I would have done on Monday. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're blowing my mind with that. That's such a good idea. Like, so I, uh, I found actually putting it sounds bizarre. No, no, but like, it's it's so. I get exactly what you're saying though, because it's planting that seed in your head that it's like that's it's, what I'm it's doing. On paper, right? so, it needs to be done. So yeah. I'm, I have my gym sessions in my calendar, and I don't even have them as gym. I have them as cardio. I have them as upper session or whatever split I'm doing at that time. Uh, you know, whatever. I have that split for that day written in my calendar for a specific time. And that has helped my consistency at the gym infinitely. Um, I even have, I, I work nine, uh, you know, I work a normal nine to five office job Monday to Friday here. I have that in my calendar still, but like, because that's what I'm doing at that point in that day. I don't need it to remind me to come in, <laughs> but um, sometimes, but like, <laughs> I don't need it to remind me to come in, but um, it helps me know that that's what I'm doing for that 
part of the day. So I've my plan with the army painting now is to do that. I've started doing that with almost like every part of my life to a certain extent yeah. in terms of things that I need to get done. Um, so my plan with my army painting now is basically doing what James just said, which is deciding, picking out the times where I, I've got 45 minutes here, an hour there, and deciding ahead of time for the week, what am I going to do in that session? Um, and I'm writing it in my calendar and deciding that. And I, I'm only a couple of <laughs> a couple of weeks into that, but um, and I was obviously rushing to build my thing. So everyone, every one of those sessions up to that was just like build, 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 yeah. build. <laughs> But as I get further down the line, I'm going to set myself some smaller goals in terms of fully painting things and start implementing in those in those di- uh, in those calendar entries. Um, recess shade these 10 models i've got a half hour or whatever um one of the things i'm struggling with that is that it made me realize i don't know how long it takes me to do anything so i'm kind of winging it at first yeah, yeah. um and that my initial step now now that i'm not just rushing to build something i'm um, actually last night for example I, I picked um squad of five infernus marines that were in that an initial list and I decided to go back and my session last night was just fully cleaning them. Like I said, I didn't fully clean them. So fully cleaning them and getting the basic material on. Um, and I thought during that, what I need to do is I need to start timing these initial sessions. So it know, so I know how long it takes me to do things because yeah. I don't know how long it takes me to do any of this stuff. At the That's minute. something that Ben spoke about actually as well. Again, timing things uh, when you're doing them, just so you have a rough idea. Cause you'd be surprised how many times you'll be like, Oh yeah, building and cleaning that would take a couple of hours. Have you ever actually sat and timed how long it takes you to do it? Yeah. It might be a lot longer. It might be a lot. I would also say shorter. it's important because you need to know how long it takes you. Yeah. If I said on like for example, it took me what I would consider quite long to build and clean my repulsor executioner um, for this list because it was so much more in depth than I thought it was going to be. Um, there was a load of gaps to fill. Like it, it partly on me, partly on the kit. I think, but. Um, <laughs> Took me like, pro- I wasn't timing it, but I probably t- at that point, because I was just getting stuff done. But I reckon it probably took me like four or five hours or something to like fully get that kit to a point where we're like, okay, I can prime this now. Yeah. yeah. Um, which I haven't done yet. But like, if I said that took me five hours, there will be just as many comments saying, oh, it only took me an hour or, oh, it took me a week. And that's because everyone's got a different skill set and everyone's got different standards and you've also like, practiced like certain things more you might be someone who's built a lot exactly. more models than someone else some random guy building his repulse executioner in an hour i could probably build it in an hour but we might have different standards Correct. so yeah, yeah. i might be trying to clean stuff up that you're okay or leaving. he might have done a repulsor army that one time he might and he's built that done, kit so yeah, many times he, he just yeah. knows where all it's the bits literally are like so that's why i wouldn't get too caught up in other people's yeah, the, other thing, the other thing I just to talk about to, get, to circle it back a bit onto time is that I know it's, but working out your timings and stuff is all well and good but then, then I always say this as well as like that there's there's different different areas of attention so you've got visual attention which is obviously why you're working on it but I, I can listen to an audio book with part of my attention and focus visual attention onto the miniature one thing to take into consideration when you are timing stuff is actually are you getting distracted and is that time actually as long as it as it it is because there are distractions that are happening through that through that period. Does that make sense? And like, being conscious as well. Like, say you time it, you being like fully focused, and then you go, I know doing this thing takes me an hour. And then when you go to actually do it, you're sat there with Netflix on. Yeah. It's not going to actually take you an hour. It's yeah. going to take you longer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, I, but like, for, for, for personally for me, like, I think that, like, you, you, you should do a little bit of planning. And I do understand, and I know we're going very, very granular and sort of like, the, the, like being very regimented with great, like your process and also your things. But I completely understand that you do need sessions where you don't really care what you do. I know that I understand that totally as well. But like, I think what I'm trying to get at is that there should be some form of balance that if you are unhappy with how much you're getting done or you're not getting max return for the time that you have available, then doing that planning is absolutely crucial. Uh, or that, just that thought at the beginning of the session, like, you know, what am I doing? What is my goal? How much time have I got? That in itself will just mean that you get to it and actually have realistic results for the time that you're investing into it. And you're not shooting because that's one of the things that I hear a lot of people say is that oh, I just I just get so 
bummed out that I'm, I'm not getting stuff done because people are setting wildly higher expectations of what they want to get done and they're not either planning or thinking about it or, or they've just not got the time availability to get that thing that they want done executed, if that makes sense. Yeah. If you're a long-term listener of the podcast, you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting. And if there's one piece of equipment that I could never live without, it's my Onyx lamp from Native Lighting. It doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2,200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6,500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. Something I think is quite interesting actually that you touched on earlier, Joe, was I guess in terms of like relating it to the gym and just like other stuff is I think people overlook how useful information is beyond the hobby. Like I'm someone who really enjoys a lot of like lifestyle productivity based like uh, work, like podcasts and things like that. And there is so much stuff that I've learned from listening to those that while when they're speaking about it, they're not like directly obviously trying to relate it to our stuff, mm -hmm. but there's so many things you can pick up on and learn from that. Like what you said about the calendar thing. Mm -hmm. I've never personally heard anyone of the wall have a hobby saying, yeah, you should put hobby sessions in your calendar. That's mm -hmm. something from another industry, but it's such like, don't discount like general advice around this stuff. Like yeah. if the part of why I'm quite enthusiastic about this sort of stuff is I went really, really deep on like productivity training when I was at college and when I was at university, cause I was very, very busy. Uh, it was a lot of workload. I actually done a three-year degree condensed down into two years. So I had like no breaks basically. And I was doing a full-time job as well. So I was very focused on like, how can I get more done? And that was when I started going into like weird experiments with like <laughs> sleep schedules. And mm -hmm. uh, that's where I found like mu different music that stimulates different productivity. I mean, whatever. So I think it's really interesting to like, just do a little bit of research and like listening or like read some books yeah. on this stuff. Just like general generally, productivity. Because you... And not just productivity, but like a lot of things like with why discount uh, an, an interview with, you know, an oil painter doing like an interview on a podcast. They might mm. have something interesting to say about how they got better at it. It doesn't mean that it can't apply to what you're doing because you don't paint, you know, yeah. on a canvas, you're painting on a miniature. It doesn't mean that someone else hasn't got something interesting to say or equally any skill. It could be someone who got like really into tech and built like some tech company. Like the way that they approach things is not irrelevant to the hobby. Yeah, Don't like put the blinders up and just watch the top 10 YouTubers on YouTube do a video on speed painting. Like you're only going to learn the same information so many different ways. Correct. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to do this podcast as like a bit of a broader focus because like we've done speed painting episodes. We could sit here and say the same stuff again, but you're just sitting in this echo chamber of like, oh, have you tried buying this paint? That will fix it. It's like, yeah. no. Yeah. I think as well, I will just mention this because I don't know how many people maybe be listening and, and feel the same way. But I personally, after being in uh, invested in the type of content that I'm about to talk about for a short period um, in like my 20s or whatever, came out the other end of like, I'm very wary of like productivity, self-help type content online podcasts and things like that youtubers especially ones that are more of a, a basically a grift yeah um 100 yeah self-help and productivity and and lifestyle content in general has it, the, there's two sides to that coin and unfortunately there is a very easy way to make a lot of money yep talking absolute nonsense that is going to do there's going to do nothing but harm um, to the to the people listening. Um, a lot of productivity and self help driven content is designed to constantly spout this stuff that you'll never reach. Yeah. So that you keep you never feel fulfilled and you keep listening to their content. That's yeah. the the rounds that that sort of thing does. The eternal hook. It's part of the reason yeah. why 
general mainstream podcasts go down the pan, the more views they get because all of a sudden now views are more important than good information and so on. And what drives views? Controversial things. Okay, we'll get controversial things on the podcast and the cycle continues. So um, I am personally very wary of that yeah. stuff, um, but I also let that put me off finding the good versions of it yeah. for too long. I guess when I spoke about that, I'm someone who's been consuming that. Con I 100% agree with what I'm you're saying. I'm not necessarily saying you're I'm sitting there who, listening to like, no, 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 like whatever. But but what I'm saying is I, I the way, when I said that, I filtered out a lot of that over the years. And yeah, I was yeah. Kind of, it took me a while. And, and maybe, obviously there's an age difference. So maybe, obviously maybe started consuming that, I don't know, a little bit earlier than, than you and and I've had a bit longer to sit with it and it it was maybe harder for me to find the good stuff yeah. at the time. I think a lot of people are aware of that kind of thing now and there's a lot of people in that space um that are doing good things. Yeah. Um and I would just yeah, it was just a point really because I could have done with someone telling me like 5 6 years ago, don't write it all off by the way. Like there's some good uh there's some some genuinely good uh information out there within podcasts and stuff yeah. it might not and probably isn't the podcasts that are getting 10 million views yeah, and yeah. things like that um but it is out there broad broader point in there being like look elsewhere like i said with the paint mm. other painters and listening to other you know yeah and just and just within that don't be put off by things that um aren't uh, warhammer yeah. yeah yeah it's the and, same with like tools it's like it's uh you could go on amazon and find some clippers but they don't say for miniature painting on them. Yeah. And then people go, oh, I don't want to buy like the wrong thing. Yeah. And then there's a whole industry of, I'm going to sell the exact same product at double the price and put Warhammer in the title and therefore it's worth more money. Yeah. You see it with brushes, you see it with all sorts of stuff. It's kind of like applying that same knowledge set to information. Yeah. It's funny though, because people, I do think it rubs, taking things from other industries or that are normal in other industries and putting them into... Uh, the miniature painting Warhammer discussion, whether that is talking points or tools or whatever. Don't you be knocking Barry, mate? Uh, <laughs> um, um, yeah, basically, you shouldn't drill your barrels with a <laughs> with an actual DIY drill. No, um, so like we had, we've had clips before that have gone online where we're discussing things that are maybe more commonplace in other industries because they're not commonplace in Warhammer. Yeah. It rubs people the wrong way a little bit, and we never have a malicious. Intent. intent with any of those we, we're just trying to have a discussion but um it rubs people the wrong way sometimes and i think people are people get wrapped up in in warhammer being or, or miniature painting being their escape where they can't let anything else in and it's like well you just let some things in that might benefit your your yep. space here yeah 100 like, um one thing i wanted to bring up setup tips so I think we've all had like a few setups over the years from like moving from place to place and mm -hmm. obviously want to change things as you go as you get more experience and whatnot. What are some tips you can give for like your actual painting setup itself? Um, and as well, maybe for someone who doesn't have like a permanent setup, what are some things you could do to maybe make your environment more productive? Oh, I mean, how long we got? <laughs> uh, like, uh, I, I, look, I'll say this as a caveat: we're we're not paid or sponsored by any companies that do storage and stuff like that. But personally, for me, in an opinionated statement, um, when I got really good story, like storage for like and racking for paint pots and things like that, and moved everything off the flat surface of the desk, that was one of the best things because it gave me a much bigger working area. And if you have got limited space, let's just say you've got a little nook somewhere in your house and you, you know, you've got a little table there with a light, et cetera. Like I can imagine with paint pots and stuff and boxes, all that, you've not got much space. The, the, the nail varnish wall rack thing or like you know, some hobby zone or whatever it is. Been, been enjoying you know, that by yes. the way. Yes. Yes. Yourself, no, okay. yeah. Do you know, complete tangents, sorry to interrupt, no, no, but just while we're on that, con that thing, I actually met my landlord for the first time the other day. Cause obviously I've been going through a uh, estate agents and stuff. And, um, he like came round and I, I was like, oh, the like, landlord visit. Like, oh, I'm going to have to explain Warhammer or whatever. Um, it wasn't like for an inspection. It was for something else. So he didn't even actually like look in the room that had all that stuff, whatever. But um, it was like really nice. Like we just got on, was chatting, whatever. And um, he just like unprovoked was like, by the way, like if you just want to, you know, like drill a TV into the wall, like just do it. It's fine. 
And I was thinking, oh, okay, I could have done with that information like two <laughs> months ago. I was stressing about whether I could even use these like command, command strip. strips in case it pulls the paint off kind of thing. So I probably could have just drilled those into the wall. But I've done George's um, uh, recommendation of the now polish uh, holders that you great. just suggested. The command strips to the wall. Um, they haven't fallen down yet. Yeah. Uh, but you can drill them now. They, they won't fall. Yeah. I promise you they won't fall. I've had mine up for years. Yeah. I've done it in multiple homes as well. It will work. Um, yeah. I'm just going to keep going, I think. Yeah. Up the wall. Yeah. Until I get Do you know what's cool ceiling? about them as well? It's like you buy those in a five pack and like they're, they're saved on my Amazon. I know I'm going to accrue more paint. I'm just <laughs> yeah, going to yeah. buy more of them. <laughs> yeah. And then they just go above. Yeah. 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 My, my goal your is up. having a room with a whole entire wall covered in nail polish holders yeah i'm gonna um, need a ladder you know like a library <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah i need yeah. a ladder on wheels <laughs> on the little rail thing to get across to get across you know when you're going to like a you know when you go to like a sports shop and they've got the wall of trainers like yeah, shoes yeah, yeah. that's gonna be james's like hobby yeah. room, but yeah. paint yeah. one thing i will say if you do buy them inspect them all because one of mine came cracked uh, right. not cracked but like warped oh uh, really right, okay. so like like bent Basically, um, that's just where it's, it's what it's the critic's been called, and it's yeah. Shipped, and yeah. Uh, I'd and already wet. kind yeah. of like put two of them up uh, by the time I saw it, that's and then bummer. yeah, it was too much hassle to care about one of them, so I'm one down at the minute. I actually tried to heat it up and bend it back into place, but it just snapped. That's a losing so, battle, yeah. Um, so I'm one down on them at the minute, but I'll they're be not that expensive though. To be fair, I'll be ordering more. Yeah, yeah. yeah don't yeah, worry I, about I, that. I, anyway, back to your I, point. No, I was just saying. I think. I think. Yeah, storage is storage is really important. Um, and just so you can lift stuff off off the flat surface, and like, whether you've got like, I, I'm, I'm, if you've got a bigger painting space and you're privileged to have that, then then it doesn't become such a such of an issue. But um, even within that, I would say like. <laughs> It's difficult, isn't it? If if I totally understand and I've been there where you like literally haven't got the space. Like if you're someone you've got a family, like you literally do not have the room for hobby to up and you've got to use the kitchen table like yeah. the weekend, whatever. That's fair. Um, I would say maybe even look into like the portable like storage solutions and They're stuff. They're really good. Like mm, do yeah. some research because I think anything you can do to minimize like any sort of friction and faff and setup is ultimately a good thing. Not only because you'll save time, but when it's like a lower barrier to do it, you're more enticed to want to hobby when you've only got 45 minutes. If you've only got 45 minutes to paint, you go, well, it's going to take me half an hour to set up. What's the point? Mm. I'll have to pack it all down again. You're not going to bother. And that's 45 minutes you could have had. Whereas if it takes five minutes, because you've got like a little storage case or whatever, and you can just get everything out. Same with like, I had that for the longest time with airbrushing. Um, it was always like a separate setup and I'd have to get it all out. And it was like, if I was doing airbrush, it would have to become like a session. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like mid paint and I'd be like, oh, I really want to airbrush this, but I'm going to have to sit and almost do it in like double the amount of time because then we get the airbrush out and then switching to having i reworked myself so i could have my airbrush on my desk and it yeah. was all like integrated like i think anything you could like sit at your hobby space and just try to think of like any little thing that can not i, I don't mean like just buying stuff for the sake of buying it because you want like cool tools or whatever or trying to convince yourself that oh if i move this rack over here then i'll be a better painter like, i'm not saying that but if you just sit and look at it in the sense of like, what is making my life difficult with this setup? Or what can I do to either fix it or aid with it in some regard? Or mm. what would you do with the next one? Yeah, you know? I, one thing that I've been doing recently, and it's only in the last year I've been doing it, I, again, nice little Amazon purchase. I'll put a link to it in the description. But um, it's an organizer box, which when I, so when I, when I started doing the exemplars, I literally raided my bits box and picked out all these spare parts that I wanted to use across models and like specific things, et cetera. And I organized them into one of these. It's really cool. It's like a box that has loads of like sub little holders that you can take and out and open and like organize all the guns into one, all the weapon, bladed weapons into one, all the pouches and purity seals into one, like a general little one that's got loads of little trinkets and bits in it. Organizing all your parts as you break down kits, it's actually saved me hours of sifting through <laughs> buckets of spare parts and like you know like I've, I've got and i've got actually a few of these organizers now for different factions or kits that i've that broken down and it actually makes saving it makes when you're choosing looking for that spare head or that purity seal or that weapon or whatever it makes it so much quicker yeah um, i think that's one of those things where it's like valuing your future self of like not being lazy with stuff it's like sometimes yeah, it might take you five minutes to sort it out now, but, but it's going it to take you 45 doing minutes it to sort it out before, later. I've said it before, do it now. Do yeah. it in that it moment. It's a yeah. thing. Like, if you're, if you're thinking about it, and it's going to make your life easier next time, you do just got to suck it up and do it. Whether you, whether yeah. you, 
it's like we were saying about like if we've over thinned paint and we notice it but we're like I'm here now I've got paint on the brush like I might as well just carry on don't yeah. just do it just <laughs> fix it now like yeah uh, just to round it out then uh, what was your what's your most important one would you say of all the things we discussed I think even when I was talking about it I was thinking about more of like looking into other uh, industries or other hobbies and how they uh, do things and I think I'm definitely going to take even more of a note of that going forward because I think that's been my biggest help so far yeah so I'm gonna gonna double down on that a little bit I think yeah I agree with yours actually I really like the calendar thing as well I might start yeah. uh, budgeting some hobby time yeah you can be week. like uh, here's my six hour session build one model yeah that'll be your one yeah because you're, cause you're slow with everything. I got it. Oh, thank you, Joe. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for excited. <laughs> People listening laugh. Uh, James? For me, it is the deciding what you're going to achieve in that session and setting realistic expectations so that you don't get to the end of it and be bummed out that you haven't done this crazy, amazing project within an hour or 45 yeah. minutes. And, and, and deciding whether, you know, it's better using that time rather than working on the model, practicing a technique. So from that, time investment moving forward you're always better at doing that specific technique yeah um yeah i think that that's... goes back to the helping your future self thing as well i yeah. guess yeah. yeah i think i'm going to do an honorable mention as well for the like limiting distractions and stuff because I, th I think we only touched on it a little bit because we have spoken about it in previous episodes mm. but knowing yourself and knowing does an audio book make me more productive because i can switch off or does it slow me down because i can't concentrate on two things at once or mm. Is there a certain style of music or are you someone who needs to sit in silence or are you someone who just like cannot have your phone in the room when you're doing stuff? Because, you know, like working yourself, working out like yourself, uh, what aids and hinders mm. you. Um, just a myth. bit of like self-reflection perhaps as yeah. well. Listening to like thrash metal or, or dubstep while you're, while you're building models to get stuff. <laughs> but if, if, again, not to rehash it too much, but we have had this conversation before where like, Joe likes to listen to completely different sort of music than I do. And like, yeah. it, like if I listen to what you do, it like put me asleep. Yeah. But you can't concentrate. You said you can't concentrate on like music with lyrics and stuff. So like it's no, different for I, everyone. Yeah, it? I find it. I mean, I do still listen to stuff with lyrics if I'm listening. Like sometimes if I'm listening to music while I'm painting, like if there's no Love Island on or anything. But, <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I'm I cycle through changing all of that to be honest just whatever I feel I think moment. for me it would change on mood as well like yeah. sometimes I do just go I'm just going to sit in silence like a serial killer yeah with, I'll do the what do you say big light off yeah yeah I'll just sit there in the dark with my hobby lamp on yeah just... big light off I'm still still adhering to nice um, yeah that's a hack I'm throwing that in there why not <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. big light off productivity big light off hobby light on productivity through the roof mate <laughs> <laughs> Question of the week time. Thank you, everyone, for submitting your questions. For question of the week, if you have a question that you'd like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast, please do drop it in the comments down below if you're watching on YouTube or uh, submit it on the C Studios Discord as well, which is linked in the description uh, as well. If you're listening on any of the audio apps, that'll be down there as well in the show notes. Uh, this question comes from Theodore Jacobson, who says, do any of you actually have an army James is obsessed about Blood Angels, but doesn't even have a Blood Angels army? Mind-boggling. Yes, I do have a full firstborn Blood Angels army. Never gets mentioned, does it? What do I feel like, like James, everyone knows James is into Blood Angels. Everyone knows James is obsessed with Blood Angels. And I think because he doesn't have a Primaris army and he doesn't speak about the firstborn army. And he's yeah. always busy doing other stuff. I, I think part of it is, we haven't spoken about this, but I'm going to make some assumptions. Because I think... I've never seen it. Exactly. And I think James can correct me or, or not if I'm wrong, but I think he probably doesn't feel like, because it was painted a while ago, I think he probably doesn't feel like it's representative of what an army by him would look like now. And that's why it doesn't get as much of a mention. That was a competitive army as well, if I recall. What, well, no, I tried to do a hybrid. I tried to paint all the models that I loved. And whilst it was sixth edition, seventh edition, and into 8th edition that I was using it. Obviously, 8th uh, edition is when Primaris came out, I think, isn't it? It's, is it 8th or 7th? 8th edition, yeah. So the 6th and 7th edition, I was playing Firstborn Blood Angels quite a lot. Um, so I tried to make it and paint it how I love the army, but at the same time, wrap it with, well, I've taken three Furiosos with frag cannons because they're absolutely horrendous, yeah. as in, like, savage. Um, so, 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 yeah, like... Um, yeah, look, I am happy with it as an army, but like the problem was is that that is was a is a passion project that I've 
improved as a painter whilst doing it, whilst trying to keep the army consistent and also trying to paint it to deadlines for, comp for when, we, when me and Tris and other mates that used to go to like Warhammer World and tournaments and SN and all this kind of stuff. So, so yeah, I have got a full Blood Angels firstborn army that I, I am really proud of it. Like, you know, I, 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 I love it as, a, as an army. It's an ongoing joke because it's, it's never, fin it's never been finished, like properly, properly, properly finished because I've, I've had this rock and hard place of, I want to get it done because I want to use it for events and stuff, but I've just don't want to rush that because I want to do that properly. Like, so it's always been kind of like that myriad of like in between kind of like 80%, but not hundred percent. Do you feel like the wind got taken out of your sails a bit when the primary stuff yeah, happened? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, did you feel like, even though this wasn't the case at the time, it maybe felt like. Oh, it's just out of date now. Yeah, well, do you know what? There's, there's always. Well, I guess it is kind of out of date now because some of the most of at the, the time, been replaced. At, at the time, yeah, at the time. Yeah, I think when, so. The, when, the, when the when it came out, the when the primaries first dropped, the firstborn stuff still outweighed. Yeah, how much primaries stuff? Yeah, yeah. There well, was. So saying, it wasn't instantly out of date, but I can imagine why if you were especially, in, you know, midway through, or oh, it's not quite finished yet, or something. Yeah. Um. I can imagine why that might maybe stop you being as passionate about it at that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, especially now with the recent Blood Angel releases, like mm. Sangard in particular, it is been replaced. Mm. So. It is something which has always been, uh, just for rounding out my absolute love, obviously for the chapter. Like I, I do want to get it done, but for people that know me for a long time, that have been to like other SN tournaments and stuff, other events and stuff, it's just, it's just always funny because it's never, it's never been finished because it's just. I, I don't want to rush it, but at the yeah. same time, I want to get it to a point. I, I will, at some point in my life, I will finish it for the sake of finishing that army. I will finish it. Um, but yeah, you're quite right. Like obviously, we've got with like Primaris coming out, and I'm doing the audience. I'm doing a Blood Angel Primaris army. I'm doing Exemplar. So there's a lot of other. I will, I will say as well. In, in fairness, in contrast to me and George, you have had an Iron Warriors army in that time, and you've had a. KD, uh, so, uh, Kachan army in that time. I, I had a, I had a full Iron Warriors army that was painted. I have got. We have an amazing story about that on the YouTube channel, by the way. Yeah. But I think if you just search like on our, it's a podcast clip. If you just search like James Army, yeah, all the words stolen. That gives you a thing. <laughs> yeah, that, that um, get, search that, that on our channel and you'll find it. Uh, I've got a full Kachan army. Um, it's fully painted and fully done. I've got my own night house. I made up a night house. That's true own, as well. Own, yeah, I've got so, my own night house uh, as well. Um, so yeah, so I've got quite a few armies and stuff, but not what probably not one painted to what you would consider where, now. Where yeah. I, what, where I am now as a painter, like and that's something that I do want the exemplars and I do want my blood angels and my audience to, to be. So, yeah. So, my yeah. Uh, my excuse for this is I've actually painted loads of armies, I've painted hundreds of models in my life. Uh, just don't own any of them. <laughs> They're all commissions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've painted tons of armies. Yeah. Uh, I'm very proud of uh, and I've never seen them again because uh, they were commissions for clients and whatnot. So I do think as well, I can understand why it would seem weird to someone that like, oh, they're really into miniature painting. They're really into Warhammer, but they don't have an army. But like, that's just not been the side of this that any of us have really been that interested in no. over the last few years, is it? Like, yeah. none of us have really been like, oh, I want an army until now. Yeah. yeah. So um well for me it's only been because i'm no longer really doing commissions especially not as much uh it's now only just finally having the bandwidth for it because yeah. it was my full-time job for several years so it's not like you, you don't want to go nine to five painting all day and then and come then home and then stuff. paint stuff like it didn't yeah. make sense so there was no like drive for me to do it uh until now but even then like where you don't actually want to game with it you could just as easily be putting all that time into individual pieces from different armies. Yeah. So like, if, you, if you're not, I, I do think if you're not fully into the game inside, your chance of desiring having a full army is way less. Yeah, which is part of where the joke of like me taking ages and ages and ages to paint stuff comes from is because I'm painting to paint because I couldn't care less about playing with them. So yeah. if, if painting is the bit that I enjoy, why would I rush it? Yeah. <laughs> Does yeah. it make sense? Um, yeah, yeah. So he's getting his excuses in, really, but <laughs> lining them right up. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's the thing. I I haven't ever had a fully what I would consider a fully painted army. I've never had a full, let's say a thousand points or something fully painted. I've had armies where they're like half painted or almost there or something. I had Death Guard. I had Dark Angels. Um, 
Uh, I even had, I had a thousand points of salamanders at one point. I don't think really? I've ever even spoken about that. Yeah, and the, it wasn't fully painted, and one and two of them were like eBay purchases painted by other people. So, yeah, I never really had like a fully painted. Did you keep thing. hold of these like past projects, or have they been like, sold on? They are uh, the Death Guard. Um, I have some potentially, um, and I have one or two of the Dark Angels just from a point of this is my first model getting back into the. The hobby but um most of it's just been gotten rid of to be honest it was just like at the time i didn't have uh money to keep like churning through stuff so i was just getting rid of stuff why are you laughing i'm, I'm laughing because james is trying to tactically open a <laughs> bottle of sparkling water and i'm just doing <laughs> um yeah open was, it. just open it <laughs> Sorry. um yeah i was just selling it and buying the new stuff kind of thing um it's funny because at the time it was like a running joke with my friend Barrett would always be getting new armies, but he would also just bang did, them out fully painted within like a week. Didn't it was he insane. like, didn't he, wasn't he playing an army at Warhammer World and went, oh, I just want to collect this army. And that's went, that an, is army. an incredible, that's, I don't know if I've said that story on the podcast before, but basically there was a story where we all went to Warhammer World. We took our friend um, who had never played Warhammer before and Barrett had two armies. Mm. So he was like, two fully painted armies, by the way. He was like, um, and one of them was Ultramarines. And he was like, I haven't actually used them yet. So you can use my Ultramarines. And I'm going to use my, uh, like, I think it was like Corn. Uh, oh, no, no, it wasn't. It was, uh, he was using like uh, Tyranids or something. And he was like, oh, I'm going to use my Tyranids. You can use my Ultramarines. So I was playing against our friend. So it was like uh, Death Guard versus Ultramarines. Barrett was playing with his Tyranids against our other friend, uh, Toby, with Grey Knights, I think. And um, the I think the Repulsor had maybe been out for a little while and he didn't have that for his Ultramarine. So he was like, their game had finished and we were carrying on. And Barrett was like, I'm just going to go to the shop and grab the Repulsor. And we were like, oh, cool. And he came back to the table with two huge bags of corn demons that had just <laughs> been released. And he was like, and he put them down and he, he looked at our friend and was like, do you want to buy them Ultramarines? I don't want to do them anymore. Hadn't, he'd fully painted them, hadn't painted a single, uh, hadn't played a single game with them and was already, I'm on, I, I w walked into the shop, saw some corn demons. He was on to the next one, getting rid of the Ultramarines straight away. That's how that went. And I go, and the next time I played the corn demons, uh, within like a month or something. Painted? Fully painted. Every time. Every time. It, it was a machine. I'm glad he's um, not in this challenge with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's solidly, um, he, he listens to the podcast every now and then, I think, so he might hear this, but he's solidly on Middle Earth stuff now. Oh, really? Solidly, yeah. yeah. Um, we spoke like, about that a little bit game. on one of the patron bonus clips yeah, uh, a yeah. little while ago. He's, yeah, I, uh, quite like, I quite like the look of the Lord of the Rings stuff really at good. the minute. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So I don't have to play against that anymore, at least. I don't, I'm not bringing my uh, grey dark angels to a fully painted army every week. <laughs> We frequently hear from you with questions asking how you can paint like our team of world-class and award-winning artists. Teaching is something that all of the team here at Siege are very passionate about, and we want to share with you the methods and techniques that we use to paint every single day, all of the incredible miniatures and armies that you have seen from us. With the Siege Studios Patreon, you'll gain access to a growing catalogue of over 300 step-by-step -step tutorials covering a huge variety of colour schemes, miniatures, painting styles, and techniques from beginner-focused foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses. Each lesson comes in a beautifully designed and easy to follow PDF format with accompanying artist commentary with new tutorials added every single week. Your subscription also includes access to our private patron channels on Discord so that you can interact directly with our artists asking for questions or feedback. You'll also be supporting the podcast directly, helping us to bring you these episodes every single week. So if you wanna take your painting to the next level and make the most of your very valuable hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash siege studios okay our weekly tradition on the podcast is a segment which we like to call hobby hacks this is where we share a little hobby hack with you that you can implement into your painting we know a lot of you like to hobby along while you listen to these episodes so it's hopefully something that you can do uh do as you go i've got one for a change mm -hmm. rather than some lunacy that james comes out with uh mine is allegedly you know when you drill out like a barrel or something you get like the the squiggly little like yeah. Uh, I think it's called like the yeah the plastic that gets like yeah twisted around into little corkscrew sort of shape. Keep those around, right? <laughs> Hear me out. And and he says that my ones are crazy. 
Keep those little shavings. Oh, the around. logic is coming, Joe. The lo- like, I know you like the logic, Joe. It's, it's not coming. Like, it's not like we all have hundreds of sprues just left over that we could shave. Drill some out of those one of them. Drill out of. one of them. It's yeah. fine. All right. You haven't got a barrel. Drill out a bit of sprue. Right. Hear me yeah. out. When you're building a kit, you know when you've got like a little gap, and you're like, yeah. "This is way too much ag for getting out mill apart or getting out your green stuff," but it's like big enough of a gap that you can't quite like press fit it with glue or whatever. You get the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, which is uh, plastic cement, but it, it flows nicely. It's not mm. goopy. It's not thick. And it comes with a little brush applicator. If you get some of that glue in there, you can basically, like a weld, use this little bit of plastic like shaving and just apply it to the gap with the glue simultaneously at the touch point. And it yeah. will basically melt and flow into that gap. And it yeah. will perfectly fill it. He told me about this. Did George just invent sprue goo? It's no, a, here's the difference with sprue goo. Sprue goo, when you apply it, it you just you're just gobbing plastic on top of the surface. You've got to go back in afterwards and, and sand, sand it, it smooth or yeah. shave it down. Yeah. With this, it's fl- because of the way the Tamiya Extra Thin works. It like wants to flow. You know, have like an oil wash over like gloss. It just perfectly yeah, yeah. gets sucked into the recesses because you're using that glue with it. It sort of sucks the plastic goo into the gap. But does it ever actually fill the gap? Perfect. Because it goes da- it will I, go down into I the gap. I have to corroborate George's. I'll give it a go. Yeah, I'll give it, it a go. It works and it's mega. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll give it a go. Yeah. It's the, the insanity of me sitting there with tweezers pulling this tiny little shaving out of a barrel and then sitting there trying <laughs> to put it on somewhere else. But I'll give it a go. It works. I'll let you know. It works. It's good. I've, it's become my favorite gap filling tool. Of Ooh. anything, okay. Because plastic's great because it's just becomes part of the kit, right? You haven't got. Yeah, one. yeah. Well, I've been yeah for bigger gaps like that, like on the repulsor, I've been using a little. Sprue it's a big. Don't thing. get me wrong. If it's a big gap, you will need to use proper gap filler. But I mean, in yeah. particular, if you're like putting a kit, it's like little seams. When it's a, when it's a seam line and it like it just doesn't meet perfectly, uh, yeah. And the seams don't meet well anyway, do they? They're never perfect. It's normally, the same. yeah, yeah. They're like uh, rounded. Sometimes yeah, it's perfect well. for that because, and it's perfect for that as well because that's. Miller part or green stuff is so overkill for something like that. Yeah. And it's a lot of effort for what is ultimately a tiny little thing. So what you ultimately usually would do is you just leave it. You just deal with it, right? Mm. But this is like a nice little compromise. Of, you can fill a tiny little thing. It does work. It's all pretty right, good. Right, I'm not hating. <laughs> I'm not hating. I'll give it a go. Yeah, nice. Okay. Uh, on that note, we're going to jump over now into the patron bonus post show of the podcast. So if you want to get even more paint perspective content in your life, because you're absolutely crazy and you want to listen to us talk for even longer for some reason, uh, check the link in the description of this episode to our Patreon. You can become a member. And in addition to that, you'll also get hundreds of PDF tutorials updated every single week. There's loads of amazing bonuses on there. Add free episodes, extended episodes, all sorts of goodies. So check the link in the description. Uh, otherwise, if you're watching on YouTube, we thank you very much and we will see you next week. It's grim dark sci-fi. Well, does that make any difference to whether it can hover or not? Okay, I've got a problem. I'm afraid that I might be on the cusp of getting into another one. This is why I do understand a lot of the times when people are moaning about, oh, GW's corporation, blah, 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 making money, whatever. I don't think that...